Alright, so this is what it should look like when you cut your uh, USB cable in half. Now, the, um, I kept the micro USB half, and you can throw away the other portion. But, when I say cut into it, I do mean, you know, tactfully cut. Don't just hack it apart, because here's the thing. If you hack it apart and crush everything inside, you got nowhere. So, what I want, what you should do is put the cord in the crook of your scissor or wire snip, and roll the wire until you get a nice circumferential cut. And then you can pull the two parts to get part from one another, and there you go. All right, now what happens here is this is what it looks like when you further dissect all of the components of the USB cable. Now at the top, like at the 11 o'clock position, you can go ahead and see the rubber or the insulation, and that's what you saw even before you start cutting into the USB cable. Then you see all that silver wispy stuff. It's kind of all over. That, although it looks like wire, I don't believe it has anything to do with well, anything we care about, I it, I believe it's just braided, and the, well, it is braided, and what that does is I believe it um, gives contour to the cord. So when you bend it, you know, rhymed around your speaker or whatever, it kind of retains that shape. Then if you see the silver tin foily looking stuff that's at like the nine o'clock position, that's what houses those four uh, main wires in the middle: the white, green, red, and black. And we only care about the red and black. Um, and here you can see the red and black. What I've done here is um, I gone ahead and you have to strip those wires to get to the well, the wire inside the red and black wi um, wire and um, get that insulation off. And if you use wire snips, you have a very good chance of just cutting off until you have no more wire. So I use the burn technique, and you burn it, and then you flake off the burnt part, and voila, you just have the wire. And here's what it looks like after I've cleaned it up. Um, as far as the um, burn technique, you want to burn it, and when you burn it, you'll see that the insulation actually catches fire, and then when the fire goes out, then you're down to the metal. So that's how I do that. Uh, okay, here we go. Now I've taken the part that I've managed to strip. This is of the black wire, so this will be our negative or whatever, and I put it through my alligator clip. I, uh, the alligator clip that I have have this little bottom hole, so I thread the um, the wire through there, and I bend it back. So if you look at, um, like, facing right in this picture, there's that little trough, and I lay it, the, uh, the wire down in that trough. And um, I suggest you get these alligator clips because they have that nice. And then the next picture, you can kind of see here how it has, like, um, like look at the what? That would be, like, the three uh, four, uh, 2 o'clock position. You can see how it has that little um, tail. You can um, fold that tail down around the wire to hold it in place. But... That's not significant, and I, for me, that's not enough. So what I do is I just glob on the solder. Be real liberal, liberal with the solder. As long as you can, don't put so much that you can't open and close the alligator clip. You're good. The more, the better. You don't want this coming loose. Okay, now I'm just showing you here my little, <laughs> my little ghetto, but yet it really works well. Um, soldering iron holder. It's essentially a soup can lid with the little soup can tab, and then I put it in there. Um, importance with this, I burn myself, so the careful you are with that, the better. All right, this another safety thing. This is above my hood, above my stove rather, and it's a hood, and I turn that on so all the bad uh, fumes go away and then go, don't go in my lungs. Um, all right, and here now after I've done it, I've gone ahead and I've managed to get both of the alligator clips on. Notice the liberal solder, the red. I mean, sorry, the white and green. Again, I, I think that has to do something with data, you know, conveying data. We don't need it. So just forget the white and green. We don't care. Okay, and here you see. I've taken everything other than the red and the black and the corresponding alligator clips, and I've just gone ahead and duct taped up everything else. So all that other crap is in that big, fat duct tape wad. And it doesn't look bad, actually. Okay, here's what I decided to use to power my little setup. You can use any battery, of course, um, but this one I picked because it's so darn skinny and small, and I like lithium batteries because they're very light and they pack a lot of oomph. This, however, this battery is kind of hard to find, a CP1, um, so use whatever lithium battery you like. Just mind the voltage, and you should be okay. Now, um, this is what my this CP1 battery looks. Um, the terminal ends are you can see both at this on the same side of the battery. That's a plus because otherwise you kind of have to run wires to both sides of the battery, and it gets kind of complicated. So that's good. Now, um, to get the to the ta terminals again, this will depend on what battery you use. But you take off the tape, and um, well, it's not tape rather the label, and um, you peel off the label. And you can see that it also makes it cool because it's now shiny and silver, right? Okay, once you get all the um, label off, um, this is what the battery looks like. And I went ahead and made that black dot there. That is to, to remind me what 
side was negative because otherwise it looks the exact same. Okay, now here um, I still got to get to the tab, so I took off the top of the casing so I can get to those little tabs, and you see how they're folded down? Where I'm going to change that, I'm going to fold them up so I can put my alligator clips on it. So, um...